In this video we're going to look at an example where we're asked to determine whether a graph is a function and then to state the domain and range. So let's start with determining whether this is a function. There's a very easy way to determine whether a graph is a function and it's called the vertical line test. So let's start off by talking about what the vertical line test is and how to use it and then we'll talk about why it works. So the vertical line test says if you can draw a line a vertical line somewhere on your graph and it touches your graph in more than one spot then your graph is not a function. So another way to say it would be is if you drew infinitely many vertical lines and they only touched in one spot then your graph would be a function. It would pass the test. So to pass the test it has to intersect in one spot everywhere. Everywhere. So one bad vertical line and it's out. It's not a function. So let's take a look. If I drew a vertical line like this, and that's supposed to be vertical, um, it's intersecting my graph in two spots. So bam, that's out. That is not a, um, not a function. Even though I could draw a vertical line out here that intersects in zero spots, and I could draw a vertical line right there that touches in one spot, the fact that there exists a line that touches in more than one spot means that it is not a function. So this fails the vertical line test. Now, why is that, you know, why does that work? Well, we have to think about what the definition of um, a function is. If we have a vertical line right here, let's say this is going through four. It's kind of hard to tell, but let's say it's going right through four. Actually, we could do another one that's going right through zero that might be easy to see. I wonder what color this is going to be. It's going to be black, which is not going to work. Um, let's change that, see if I can make it red. So let's say we drew a, there we go. Let's say we drew a vertical line right there through zero, and we know we can see that it's touching here and here. So the coordinates, you know, it's kind of hard to get it exactly, but the coordinate of this point would be over zero, up, it looks like three and a little, I'll just call it 3.1. And this point down here is over zero, down, a little bit below negative one, so we'll say negative 1.2. Okay, so that means I've got these two points on my graph. Well remember, the definition of a function is each x can be paired with exactly one y. Each x has to be paired with exactly one y. If you have an x value of zero being paired with two different y values, then that is not a function. In order to be a function, each x has to be paired with exactly one y. So the vertical line test, when it's touching in two spots, that means you've got a particular x. That vertical line is on a particular x, and if it touches in two spots, it's being paired with two different y values. If it's touching in three spots, it's being paired with three different y values. So that's why it has to be one spot everywhere, because each x has to be paired with exactly one y in order for it to be a function. So vertical line test, very, very easy, very fast to determine whether something is a function. All right, let's go to the second part and talk about the domain and range. Now, a lot of times I get uh, people saying, well, it's not a function, so therefore it doesn't have a domain and range. And I can kind of understand that because a lot of times when we're talking about functions, we talk about domain and range. But um, this is not a function. Actually, it would be what we could call a relation. But we could still identify the domain and range of this relation. And it's going to be the same definition. Okay, So um, the domain is going to be your x values and the range is going to be your y values. And we could go back to our definition of a function which says each member of the domain must be paired with exactly one member of the range. So that's why we're so used to hearing domain and range with functions because they're in the definition of a function, but a relation still has a domain and range. It's just that each member of the domain is not paired with exactly one member of the range, so therefore it's not a function. All right, so let's look at this here and we want to find our x value. So here's our here's our x axis, right? So we basically are asking ourselves how far to the left and how far to the right does this go? So we could say, well, it goes to the left over here to negative 5 and it goes to the right over here it looks like 1. I'm going to call that 1. So therefore the x's 
go from negative 5 up to 1. And we could write our domain like that. Let's talk about some different ways to write the domain. Um, if we put it in interval notation, it would look like the domain would be the interval. Actually, it would be including negative 5, so we're going to use a bracket. It would be the interval from negative 5 up to positive 1. If I put that in set builder notation, oops, need an L there, set uh, builder, it would look like the set of all x such that negative 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1. Okay, something like that. Now the y values are going to determine the range. So we, the y values are how far up and down this, um, this graph goes. So it looks like it goes down to negative 2 and up to 4, I'm going to say, for negative 2. All right, so our range in interval notation would be from negative 2 up to 4. When you're doing interval notation, always put your smaller number first. If I put that in set builder notation, I could say my range is the set of all y's such that negative 2 is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to 4. And I probably should have put this as my domain. So when you have a graph and you want to find the domain, just, just focus on how far left and right does the graph go. And when you want to find the range, focus on how far up and down does it go. And that's, that's if it's connected, if it's all continuous and connected. If it's, if it's not connected, it could be broken up into different pieces. But for simple examples, that's, that's what you want to look at.